Good morning folks, uh, this is Marco uh, and uh, this is really like a test to see my moto vlogging setup. Today I like to uh, discuss and, and rate uh, my new BMW R1200 GS and uh, specifically according to uh, the long commuter Uh, checklist if you want so um, when I rate a motorbike for vlogging for for long commutes I tend to concentrate on seven points so the first is the comfort on long distances the second is the turbulence uh, the third is the fuel consumption the fourth is a C3 handling, the fifth is ease at speed on motorways, the sixth is a rider's interactivity, therefore the whole electronics and systems and all of that, and the seventh is a security. So uh, stay tuned and um, I'm taking uh, the motorbike on the motorway to discuss the first point which is the comfort on uh, long distances hello so before we start so I'm entering the motorway now before we start I just wanted to uh, share with you the setup I got I got a GoPro 6 I'm shooting in 180 uh, 60 frames per second and in um, I think is uh, the, the wide view um, so the first point on our checklist is the comfort on long distances um, and this motorbike scores top marks on that I mean this bike is as as toured the world and I think that is what made it so successful is the top selling bike in the in his range for a reason and it's uh, very comfortable the position is upright and no strain on uh, the the wrist or the legs whatsoever it's like uh, being sitting in a chair and uh, therefore you know i feel i could ride all day long uh, on this motorbike i use this motorbike to commute it to work and it's uh, 45 miles every every leg uh, therefore it's not like a short trip for commuting and uh, there are quite long uh, pi uh, pieces of motorway and um, yeah this motorbike is is very very comfortable on long distances so uh, top marks I would say from uh, 1 to 10 I would say this motorbike scores definitely 10 okay the next point uh, on the checklist is the turbulence so how is this motorbike doing um, with regards to turbulence uh, so up to uh, 60 miles per hour is actually is, is not noticeable there is no turbulence I'm in a nice sort of uh, bubble here where I don't feel turbulence either on my chest or on my face on my helmet or on the top of the helmet whatsoever uh, I it also must be said that um, I've installed the um, uh, windscreen from the uh, GS Adventure which is uh, wider than uh, the standard one uh, and that obviously um, I guess will will, uh, will help towards the turbulence now let's try to go maybe uh, around uh, 80 miles per hour um, and see how the turbulence goes so again I am in a nice bubble uh, I don't I don't feel any turbulence on my chest or on my helmet or on the top of my helmet the only turbulence I feel slightly is on my arms but you know that that's kind of normal uh, is to be expected um, so from a turbulence perspective uh, I would say that this motorbike again scores 10 now on point number three of uh, my personal checklist and that is about the fuel consumption so 
Um, let's find out if I can show that on uh, the TFT. So, yeah, currently uh, the motorbike shows 54.3 miles per gallon. Uh, I've been able to uh, sort of normally on, on just by uh, normal use. Um, I, I can get 55 miles per gallon with this motorbike. Even is a 1200cc, um, I'm really happy with that. Uh, of course, you know, uh, there are motorbikes where you can get like 65, um, but for the 1200, getting a 55 miles per gallon for my commute is, is great. Uh, of course, you know, if I went with a hybrid car, maybe I would get a 65, but the costs uh, are uh, significantly lower um, uh, with a motorbike compared to, uh, to a car. So the next point is, on, on my list, is the easy speed on motorways. So, as, as I said, you know, I mean, this motorbike is a 1200cc, so it's a very powerful motorbike. Uh, I had the Kawasaki 1000, and uh, that was okay on motorways, uh, but when I wanted to go, for example, like, uh, for example, if I accelerate now, and I wanted to go like uh, 80 miles per hour, or, you know, maybe a bit more than that, with the Kawasaki, I felt a lot of uh, vibrations. Whereas with uh, this motorbike, it's, it's basically effortless. So uh, it's got um, she a lot of uh, power. And um, uh, yeah, it's powered by a twin boxer engine. And um, yeah. Also, the center of gravity is low because uh, the engine is basically at the base of the motorbike. Therefore, the motorbike is very stable, but uh, as you're riding it, uh, it's uh, quite uh, it's light and nimble to, to sort of, um, of maneuver. So, um, from an, an easy speed of motorway, now, um, Obviously, I haven't compared that with a sport bike because I, I don't drive sport bikes. Uh, they, I find them a bit, a little too dangerous for me. But um, from a, a, a person looking at uh, commuting long distances with um, lengthy um, amounts of motorways, uh, this bike handles motorway speed very easily. So uh, my personal my personal score on uh, on the easiest speed of motorway of motorways is uh, nine out of ten. The next point on my list is the seatly handling. Uh, so from a, a, a commuter point of view, okay, uh, from a long commuter point of view. Uh, yes, so we covered the motorway with the comfort on long distances, turbulence, uh, fuel consumption and the easy S speed. Um, but um, another important point of a commute is how the motorbike handles uh, uh, in, 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 um, in the city. And this was uh, the main, one of the main reasons why I, I moved from the Kawasaki Versus 1000 to the R1200GS. Um, I guess is uh, the differences in the engine and the fact that Kawasaki Versus is a four cylinder, whereas this one is a two cylinder. Also, this is a boxer. The other one is, um, is just like, you know, it is built for power and I found um, that the Kawasaki Versus 1000 was struggling in the city and you know when you're commuting especially during the peak times um, you know it's a it's a start and stop start and stop the other the other difference and and why I think uh, this motorbike handles better than the Kawasaki 1000 versus 1000 in the cities 
is that the um, gears are longer on this motorbike the next the next point on our list is the rider's interactivity and uh, here uh, and and here I have to say that you know there is no comp competitor uh, there is no competitor uh, with the R12 GS I mean I've got like a TST, TFT display I don't know if you see it there and then I got the Navigator 6 and the combination of the two is incredible I mean I've paired my Bluetooth headsets I've got an intercom sport uh, and uh, I paired that uh, to, to the TFT display and to my phone so the TFT display now uh, allows me through this uh, ro rotary uh, handle here to actually uh, control both the TFT display and the navigator f just at the touch of, uh, of this magic wheel which I absolutely love so um, every morning, uh, you know, I, I listen to The Economist, uh, the, the audio edition, because su I've subscribed to the digital, to the digital version, and uh, I can control uh, everything in terms of the stories I hear, uh, the order, and uh, and so on and so forth, from simply at the touch of this uh, of this lever. Uh, which you know, um, it, it's it's brilliant. When uh, when I receive a call on the TFT display, uh, it just shows me who the caller is, and then you know, similarly to what a a, a phone, a modern phone would do, I can uh, swipe uh, left and right to either answer or or uh, decline the call, and then uh, while I'm calling, the um, economist playback stops and then uh, when I stop the call the <coughs> the economist playback resumes which is you know absolutely uh, great I can the, the other fantastic thing about this is and I'm going to show that to you um, is that you know as I move towards the right uh, the the navigator actually interacts with the bike and it gives me information about about the bike so it gives me there are 16 parameters that uh, it shows uh, at the moment you are seeing four but uh, as I zoom out you can see there are 16 there and it goes it covers everything from a fuel range to consumption to front uh, fr from front and rear tire pressure to the to the trip meter um, you know it's got like a temperature engine outside engine the fuel economy uh, you name it okay now I uh, actually have put um, I, can, I, I just want, I'm interested in the top four metrics for me, which are the fuel range, the current consumption, uh, the front and the rear tire, just because I want to make sure that, um, uh, you know, I, um, I got the right pressure uh, when, I, when I go around. And then, you know, by simply moving the ladder, now is uh, navigating me home and um, yeah, and, and it, it, it transforms into a navigator, which is absolutely brilliant. Now, by pressing down this menu button and keeping it pressed, let me stop first. <laughs> by keeping pressed this menu button here, I now go into TFT mode. And in here now, by pressing slightly down, I can navigate with a combination of the menu button and this rotation through the various uh, menu including settings and so on and so forth um, and you know basically from a rider perspective I've got everything that I would have in a modern car with Bluetooth system or whether I was commuting on the train by listening to the economist through a he my headset uh, I can answer calls uh, 
a detachable button and my hands never have to leave the handlebar and this is so from a rider's interactivity perspective if i could give 11 to this motorbike i would uh, the score is absolutely 10 out of 10. The last point I, I wanted to touch upon is uh, security because obviously um, <laughs> riding is a lot more um, risky in a way that than, um, than uh, you know going by plane or by car or by train. Uh, I think the miss and then flyer uh, is uh, sort of one of my role models when it comes to motorbikes and uh, vlogging um, says that you know I think um, going by motorbike is 166 times or something like that uh, riskier than than going by by other means of transport uh, but you know that's why as a rider security is fundamental so how does this motorbike help you with security well, this motorbike um, has got a number of features uh, that help. First of all, it's got riding modes uh, and um, it's got three, three or five. Um, three comes just out of the box. For, to add the additional two, uh, there is a little key that uh, comes with the motorbike. And if you want to install the additional modes, you can. I haven't done it yet. Maybe I'll do it. Uh, and they are the so-called pro modes. So this motorbike has essentially got uh, three uh, uh, three modes. It's got uh, road, which is where what I'm in at the moment. And uh, what that does is um, it's got the sort of kind of uh, good power, uh, but uh, it's got the traction control and the ABS fully fully engaged. Um, the um, let me do a bit of filtering here. The next one is um, it's a dynamic and uh, dynamic. It's uh, a bit imagine like a sport mode. So the throttle is a lot more responsive. The suspensions are a bit harder. Although uh, with this magic button here, you can actually soften the suspensions even if we are in in dynamic so you can have maybe a bit more of a responsive motorbike but um, with, with the software softer uh, suspensions and then the third mode is rain and that obviously uh, it's uh, for for the rain and uh, yeah in, in dynamic I believe that the traction control and the ABS are cut by 30%. So if, for example, you know, you either voluntary or involuntary uh, put together a set of techniques where to do a wheelie, uh, the 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 the. The front wheel will actually raise, but um, uh, then uh, the traction control will kick in, and then it will cut the power, and and uh, yeah, and and uh, it will bring the yeah. Um, so, uh, from a security perspective, obviously this one has got ABS, but um, and then it's got like a dynamic ESA, which um, uh, what it does is automatically adjust the suspension uh, based on the load, and um, it reads uh, something like the the road and and the, um, the current situation, something like 50 times ta 50 thousand times a second or something like that, and adjusts the ride accordingly. <coughs> Which, with the previous models, uh, one had to set up, you know, whether you were riding alone, alone with the bags, with the pillion, with the pillion and bags, and and so on and so forth. Uh, so that's. Um, that's all very well and good and obviously it's got uh, like uh, traction control which is great uh, I hope that this review will help you in uh, taking the right decision 
from now for now the Ellsbury conscious rider is checking out and uh, cheerio